All right, guys. I'm over here. Grab something. Doing the whole franchise today. All right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we are talking about Ghostbusters, particularly the first one. But I'm doing the whole franchise. I'm gonna do the, you know, the first two. We'll do it like this. First two. Here's the collectors set, Blu-ray set. Get the two steel books. There's also a collector steel book. That's how I do want to get it. You know, it's kind of. And of course, the remake, 2016 remake, which I don't think is all that bad. I'm sorry. I hear people bashing it all the time, and I don't get it. But we'll get to this. We'll get to it, okay? Right now, we're talking about the one, the only, the original Ghostbusters from 1984. So, what can I say about this movie? No one even knows. There's some, there's a book thing in here. Ghostbusters. Uh, story of Ghostbusters. I know there's a thing to talk about the casting, so I want to get that in there. Where is it? As I looked at this before, just kind of right through here until I see something. I know some pictures there. See, kind of cool. Ghostbusters two. Okay, now we're on Ghostbusters 2. So what the... There's no 1984 talent bios. Okay, uh, Bill Murray. Dan Aykroyd. Harold Ramis. Ernie Hudson. Oh, they even got Rick Moranis. Sigourney Weaver. They have... The director, Ivan Reitman. And, of course, the State Puff Marshmallow Man. Sound like that, I right there. The State Puff Marshmallow Man. Believe me, if you will, people. The Ghostbusters and destroying a 100-foot marshmallow man in New York City. We're ready to believe you. All together there. Are you just going to show us pictures, or are you actually going to review the movie? I'm gonna review the movie, just calm down. I knew there was a. I swear there was a thing where they talked about the casting. I guess I could tell you what I know. So, originally they wanted John Candy, and John Belushi, and Eddie Murphy to be a part of the film. Eddie Murphy was shooting Beverly Hills Cop, so he wasn't available. Uh, and John Belushi had passed away a year prior to this, I think, in 83. I think. And John Candy said no. So... I think originally John Candy was going to play the Lewis Tully character, and I believe Eddie Murphy was going to be Winston, and I'm not too sure who John Belushi was going to be, I don't know if he was going to be, probably an Egon, I don't know. But they do say 
John Belushi is technically in the film because they modeled Slimer off of his Animal House character, Bluto. I'm a Zet. <clears throat> Get it? Yes, let's talk about this because I, you know, now being of critical mind, now that I review movies uh, on YouTube, I look at things with a different perception. I still love the hell out of this movie. And I don't think the other two are too bad either. Alright, I've never had any problem with either of these. My son and I have watched this one, the remake, more than we had the first two. We absolutely love to watch this one. So it'll be interesting now watching it. Because I think it'll be the first time since I started reviewing movies that I've watched this. So we'll, we'll see. But, um... So yeah, I got the Ghostbusters. Maybe I'll have to include these steelbooks in the background for next year's Halloween Horror Month backgrounds. I wanted a basic stuff. But, uh, yeah, so what is the story? We always start with the story, right? The story is that uh, three, I don't know to call it professors, but there are three men working at a college, three scientists working in a college, uh, they get a call. From the New York, or not, no, not to get a call, but they find out that something happened at the New York Metropolitan Library. The librarian ghost, which is seen here in the artwork. Beautiful artwork, though. Anyway, by the way, just beautiful artwork. Too bad it's not on the inside, it's just Ghostbusters logo there. <laughs> well, in the disc, it's kind of cool, isn't that cool? That's cool. That's cool. PG. <clears throat> so, they go to investigate, and eventually this ghost that pops up leads to other ghosts, and they find out there's actually some weird plan by... Is it... Did they say that it was Shandor who built the... The building, the, but it's all about bringing forth Gozer the Gozerian, the destroyer. Yes, we all know where that goes. I mentioned to talk about Walter Peck. I mentioned to talk about this guy because he. Let's just let's keep so, let's keep with the story here first. All right. So you got three scientists. They're the beginning of this. The first scene has Venkman with two college students, right? He's sitting on the girl, messing with the guy. The girl, however, I don't remember the actress's name. Should have looked it up. But she was on Charles in Charge, the first season of Charles in Charge. She played Charles' girlfriend, and I recognized her right away, like. Now, when I first watched this, like, after I started watching Charles and Archie, at least I had the first season. But, like, so, the pawn shop, I think, but, um, to try to get that back. Um, this is a good show. Uh, and I noticed, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, isn't that, uh, what's her name? I forgot her name, too, but, like, yeah. No, I keep going up with Mary Lou Renner and I know it's not her name. <laughs> but it's her. And then we transition to them getting thrown out of the college because of what exactly? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I ever got that. They just got thrown out. I mean, there's an actual reason why they leave in the... I'm sure there's a reason here too, but it's just like, what is it? Like, they get thrown out because they don't have any results or something? They don't want to pay for their experiments. I can see that, I guess. But, uh, yeah. So, man, he's not even on the cut. Look at this. Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Sigourney Weaver, Harold Ramis, and Rick Moranis. Winston gets shit on the most in these two movies, all right? Especially in the second one. Okay, you can argue that in this one, 
it's okay because he's just starting out. He doesn't show up till halfway through the film, all right? And he's barely in the film. He shows up at the end to help kick some ass. You know, the Gozer and stuff. But by the second film, he should be a part of that main team, but he's not. We'll get to that. I'm not going to try to go into two right now. Because I, I, like, I actually prefer two over the first one, to be honest, because of Vigo. But, uh, yes, we'll start with we'll Vigo's bust this year, the first one. And, um, yeah, so the, I, I get, wait anymore, I'm going to talk about Walter Peck. Yes, well, everything, Walter Peck is right about everything he says about their whole operation. It's unstable. They even say that, all right? It's unstable. He, he was right, completely right. But what he was wrong on was turning off the containment unit, all right? And I'm sitting here watching it. Think, well, okay, he's right, completely right. It's dangerous. So, it is completely dangerous. It's unstable. Why would you turn that off? If you know for a fact that it's dangerous and it's unstable, and they're telling you, if you turn it off, it'll get worse. They are telling you, you won't listen to them, but they are telling you to your face that it'll get worse if you turn, if you turn it off. Why does he have them turn it off? It's going to make it worse. Because he's got to prove his point. He's got to... It's, it's not enough that he is right. He's got to prove that he's right. Okay? Walter Peck has an ego problem. He had to prove that he was right. Not just, you know, to know that he's right. And to for them to say that he's right, he's got to prove it. Which is why he had them turn off the thing to prove he was right. No, no I agree he's right. Okay, he's proved that he's right. What I don't agree on is having the Ghostbusters, especially Winston, arrested. Winston, Winston is right. But I barely know these guys. I just started working here. Exactly. He just got there at that point. All right? And he gets arrested with the rest of them. Because he's a Ghostbuster, I guess. It's like Peter in part two. How he gets arrested even though he had nothing to do with the other three. I'm just saying. We'll get to that. But like. So it's irked me. Alright. They get arrested. Why? It wasn't their fault. They warned Peck. If they turned. If he turned off the machine. Shit would happen. He didn't listen to them. Because he wanted to be proven right. Why are they arrested? It makes. It's not right, okay? It's not their fault. They, they had this, yes, they set the containment unit. They got everything set up. They did that. But they admitted it was unstable. And they admitted that something, they told Peck something would happen if they, they warned him. He did not listen because he wanted to be proven right. So he had it turned off. And then he has them arrested when it's not really their fault. It's Peck's fault. If anyone should be arrested for causing all that, it should be Peck. Peck should have been sitting in jail, not them. Because it was Peck who gave the order to turn off the machine. They warned him. They told him. It wasn't that it wasn't a good idea. He didn't listen because he wanted to be proven right. I'm not repeating myself. I'm sorry. I'm just putting out my point here. Peck should have been arrested. Not a Ghostbusters. But they get arrested anyway. And then the mayor calls them to take care of business. They play that great song. Saving the day. Saving the day. I love that song. I do. The, the, the music for Ghostbusters. Even in this one. You want some more. You want some more. Whatever. That, yeah. I love the music in Ghostbusters. It's great. So, I spoke my piece about Peck. And he gets goobered all over by the State Five March when I'm at the end. But, uh, it's just. I 
that peg thing has always bothered me. And he's not in the second one. And I know why. Um, it's not specifically said, but after playing Peg, he was, William Ellerton was hated. He played another character in the Die Hard franchise that was also hated. He was in the first two, but like, this, Peck was hated. You don't really see him much anymore, William Ellerton. And that, this role probably ruined him. And I think the role in part two played by Kurt Fuller was originally supposed to be Peck. But because he wouldn't come back because of all the hatred, you know, they brought in someone else. But I fully believe it was supposed to be Peck. And now you're thinking, well, why would Peck be employed by the mayor? He wouldn't. I was just supposed to be Peck. He wouldn't be employed by the mayor. He would just be Peck. Okay? So now that I spoke my piece about Peck, let's just move on. Okay? Now, one thing I thought of after the thing is turned off and all the ghosts come out, this kickstarts this prophecy about Gozer, right? Why? Why now, after all of them released? All these ghosts that were in the containment unit were already in New York before they were let out. And nothing was going on. Apart from ghosts showing up, nothing big was going on. Why now, once they're re-released back into where they came from, does it kickstart the end? I was, I was laying there watching, I was thinking, why? Why Why does it now kickstart off the end? Because even like, the Zool or uh, Dana, whatever, she's just like, looking out the window or whatever, I'm just like, what? And then you got, what ran into? Or whatever he does when he's, Vince golfing. Or whatever, he's just, I want that to be the thumbnail, by the way. <clears throat> I'm just going to sit here. I don't know. It might be a thumbnail. I don't choose a thumbnail, so. But, um. So, yeah, just just a thought about my head. Why does that? They were already out there. Maybe it's just the explosion that kickstarts everything, you know, because it explodes. Maybe that's what it does. It's just the explosion. I just thought of that. I don't know. I point out. I just point out things. All right. I'm not just saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it. it it's just confusing. That's all I'll say. So from there, we go to the climax. All right. Because there's stuff that happens, the montages, but the climax. So we got to get to us. This review is going to be about three hours long. So. Okay, this is what I thought, and maybe you know, I'm gonna debunk myself anyway. But they get to the building, and this this is gonna make me think when I watched it. Okay, they get to the building, and the ground cracks beneath them. They fall in. Okay, then a cop car goes in. <laughs> then it just come out like nothing's wrong. Okay, but they fell into this chasm. And then a car, a cop car, went into the chasm right after they did. Not one of them has an injury from that, or, I mean, you know, none of them's going like this. I think I hit in the head by the car. I mean, come on. I'm just saying. By the cap car. <clears throat> I'm just saying. So they get up. It's, it's funny, they have to climb up a bunch of flights of stairs. But there's still power in the building, right? They go to, there's lights on, right? If I remember correctly, can they still use the elevator? Go up to, you know, floor 22, ding! Well, I have to climb the stairs, because it's funny? Sure, but impractical. I know there's an elevator, because you don't, I don't think... I don't think that Dana would climb 21 flights of stairs to come home from work every day and go back down. Going downstairs isn't that bad, but going up, I mean, there's got to be an elevator, right? They could have used it. I don't know. If it's just to be funny, going upstairs, fine, but it looked like there was still power in the building. I I don't know. Uh, they get up there, and I'm like, why did they stop at 22? That's not the last floor. 
I've seen this how many times? And I, they go into her apartment and there's the stairs. Oh. Where the stairs go? The stairs go up. Thanks, Dr. Bankman. Thanks. They get up there. I mean, this the gozer. It's a female with the two dogs. So, okay, something I've always wondered. These dog-like creatures come out, and they, you know, it, it doesn't really, it's not really those dog-like creatures that you just see the hand. By the way, gropes Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver, and the, you, you look close when you said, it, it, it cops a feel, I swear to God. It, it cops a feel, okay? So, and she gets pulled into the fridge or whatever. But that's supposed to be a dog creature because another dog creature comes after Tully and he gets taken and they're both in, in like, possessed. Like, the dog creatures possess them to take human form. So then, why do they turn back into the dogs afterwards? Wouldn't that, isn't that weird? Like, their dog form, they, their dog, their dog demons that take possession of the human body just to then become dog demons again at the end. I don't know. Just interesting thing that I bring up. Uh, so, earlier in the film, of course, I talk about total platonic reversal. Reversal, sorry. Crossing the streams. Don't do it. Now they have to. Uh, but first, Ray conjures up a 100 foot marshmallow man when they try to blast Gozer in the, the female bodybuilder form, or whatever she is, female form, and disappears. They think they won, and I'm they're going, you know, I'm like, how do you think they won? Just out of curiosity. Just saying. Uh, how do you think you won? But, uh, so then the voice says, choose the form of the destructor. They're like, oh, clear their head, clear their heads. But Ray doesn't, and he thinks of the state puff. Marshmallow Man, you know the heavens, the big Marshmallow Man, they cross the streams, okay, into the portal, sorry, uh, they cross the streams into the portal, total platonic reversal, they save the day, and then uh, miraculously, uh, Dana and Tully are normal, of course. Guys, this is a great movie, alright, Ghostbusters is a, is a really good movie. All right. And I've stated a couple problems with it, but it's not that bad. So I can't give it any less than a 9 out of 10. Okay? Yeah. There's something weird to happen. No, I didn't even touch the remote. I was watching it on the Freeform app on my Roku. Because I was lazy. I didn't want to get the movies out and put it in my Xbox. So, uh... I went to the Freeform app, and I watched it on there, and like, on my Roku, and I was dancing to the theme song at the end, right? I don't know where, it just goes back to the, to the main menu on the Roku, I'm like, what, did I bump the remote? No, the remote was way over there, away from where I was dancing, so I don't know how that happened, but, so, no. so yeah, Ghostbusters 2 is next, and uh, it's going to be a positive one because I actually like Ghostbusters 2. I'll be defending it. Okay? And I will be comparing it somewhat to the Nostalgia Critics or Channel Awesome's um, fan scription that they did on it. Because they have some good ideas in that. So I'll be comparing, you know, what they did and what they actually did in the movie. Just to give a little bit of a, you know, comparison of what it could have been. But also, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I won't be comparing. I don't know. I'll talk about it. You know, oh, what what the uh, Channel Awesome had them do was do, 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 do. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it in there. Maybe I won't. Who knows? So, uh, what are your thoughts on Ghostbusters? Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. And as always, love, peace, chicken grease.